What is going on, comic book movie fans? My name is Jonathan. This is Comic Book Cinema. Today, I am joined by Mr. Esoc and Mr. MGC. You can find them on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and many other places. All their info is going to be below them. Guys, how are you doing today? Living the dream. Doing great. Today, we're going to discuss the future of the DCEU, or newly rebranded DCU. And I think that's a smart decision, by the way. It doesn't really, it's just kind of a little bit longer and a clunkier acronym as opposed to just the DCU. It makes a lot more sense and it's easier and it rolls off the tongue easier. DC and Warner Brothers, up until about a year ago, have been going down a path that as a fan just makes you want to pull your hair out. And I don't have much hair left, so I can't afford to pull any more of my hair out, guys. They, they've been gun shy. They've been nervous about, you know, oh, this movie didn't make as much as we wanted it to at the box office. We better pull the sequel. You know, we better just get rid of that character. They've been very reactionary. And I think now, finally, after the acquisition by Discovery, which is crazy that Discovery bought Warner Brothers. That just doesn't even sound right to me. But with their new management, David Zaslav, he has been chopping a lot of bull crap, a lot of stuff that their resources and time just aren't worth like CW shows and the Wonder Twins. You know, a lot of this stuff that on paper didn't even sound like a good idea. He's starting to, and even the Batgirl film, like, you know, I've heard rumors and rumblings that a lot of test audiences said that that film was unwatchable. So it sounds like he's making a lot of good decisions. I personally think that with this new management that they are going to be able to accomplish things that, you know, they might not have accomplished in the past. They've already named James Gunn as the head or as the Kevin Feige figure. And if you look over at Marvel, what he was doing before he was unceremoniously fired, they were already kind of grooming him for that position anyway, or at least to be the person to go to for, oh, this movie's going to take place in the, uh, you know, a different planet, or it's going to go venture out into the cosmic world. So what do you think we should do here, Mr. Gunn? You know, he was already an advisor. With all that being said, what do you guys think? Do you think that DC is going to finally turn things around? So I personally am a huge DC fan. I've been a huge DC fan for like forever since I started reading comics. And DC itself and Warner Bros, they've, or at least Warner Bros has been trying to sell DC for a decade, like a very, very long time. It's been awful. It has been awful. We've had, I think, like four or five different creative officers. Like Daniel Cherry. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Daniel Cherry, but he's like some marketing executive who was put in charge of creative for no reason at all and then almost immediately quit and went to go work for Kanye like last year. It has been a mess because the thought process at DC Comics for, like I said, a decade has been everyone might get fired at any point because we might be sold at any point. So no one has actually cared. No one's actually invested the time into creating great long form stories. And whenever they have Jeff Johns, they've been getting screwed by executives like Dan Didio. But that's that's a whole separate conversation. But the way that that relates to the movie universe is because they basically followed that same strategy. They knew that they could have been sold at any time. So they haven't really been focused on like long form storytelling. They've been focused on how can we make the most money right now? And, and that's why they've been so so impulsive in their decisions like oh harley quinn is popular give her a movie like oh suicide squad fail just cancel every single plan we ever had with this movie it's, it's a lack of accountability more than anything else it reminds me a lot of kathleen kennedy's star wars approach but that's a whole separate conversation but you had executives who were like hey man of steel failed well it's obviously henry cavill's fault so we're not going to give him another movie it's not the writing it's not the directing it's not anything else it's henry cavill like that's he's the problem which is just so nonsensical I have been saying that James Gunn needs to take the helm since Suicide Squad came out. Since Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, I have been preaching this man's name. And I am more than like I'm more than happy that he's taken the reins of everything. I was he's very adamant about he really is. I was so adamant about just rebooting the entire DC, uh DCEU, which I'm so glad that they changed the name because DC Extended Universe is so so dumb and that is such a that is such a dumb name for anything extended it's one of the decisions that was made by that prior management over yeah it's it's 
Because they they their entire focus was, hey, we need to be different from Marvel, so we can't be the DCU because they're the MCU. Just if it works, just do it. Like I'm not saying copy their formula, but like DCEU, yeah. you're just obviously trying to be so different, and it's not working. The reason that I was so adamant about James Gunn is because he understands the heart of DC. Like he gets mm. it, and that's clearly the shown nerd. in Peacemaker. And my favorite thing about Peacemaker is the fact that it starts off like vaguely in the DC universe, right? Like it is at some point in the universe. Like he talks about things that have happened in the past. He brings up villains of the past. And that's exactly the approach that I want DC to take from now on. We we know all of these characters' origin stories. We don't need to go back and rehash everything. I just want them to start with these characters at their peak. Like I want to see Superman being Superman, doing Superman things. I want to see the Flash doing the Flash things. I hope that they keep following this peacemaker approach. Like I said before, I, I was hoping that they would just reboot everything and start fresh. Doesn't look like they're going that way because of Black Adam and, you know, Henry Cavill's return and Peacemaker season two coming out. But I have faith. I have faith that he's going to he's going to figure it out. I have faith in that. Obviously, the DC you <laughs> has just been screwed since, I mean, right after Man of Steel. I mean, they had so much that they could have done with DC. DC is literally the easiest property to make multiple movies of. I mean, their animated movies blow Marvel's animated movies out of the water. They're exceeding in video games and animated movies way better than most of what Marvel is doing. So the fact that they're screwing the pooch so badly in their movies is ridiculous after man of steel we should have instantly got a batman movie we should have gotten yep. aquaman flash green lantern wonder woman we should have gotten all those movies but we didn't like they just went to you know what we got and it just fell very hard we don't know what's going to happen after the flash movie comes out um whenever that comes out because it's supposed to be like their flashpoint ish movie who knows and there's inklings of Ben Affleck coming back as you know in his own standalone Batman movie. And my hope is whatever happens in this Flash movie can maybe retcon some stuff that we got in you know the Justice League and whatever. And yeah. give me a Batman solo movie where Nightwing is Nightwing, Red Hood is Red mm -hmm. Hood. You know, like Esau said, I don't want to see them in their early years anymore. Like let's skip that. Let's give us our characters that we know and love. And let those people strive. You know, like I want to be able to see all of our characters already good at what they do. I want to see all the Green Lanterns. I want to see the Green Lantern corpse. I want to, you know, everybody fighting and doing awesome things and not like, oh, I'm I'm kind of new at my powers. Like, you know, give me some cool movies. And they have so much that they can do, but they're just failing right now. I totally agree. I, and I think that's probably the path they're going to go down. I think that that Flash film, first of all, that Flash film, there's been a lot of rumblings that not only the executives at Warner, but a lot of the people that have seen the test screenings for this film are saying nothing but stellar things about it, which That's is so unfortunate because you have Ezra Miller who's playing the Flash and he has a lot of you know wild and crazy and serious charges pending. So you're going to have to do something with him, whether that be – you know, using what you've introduced in this film to explain how we now have a different variant of the Flash or whatever the case may be. But you need the Flash. You got to have a good Flash for the DCU to work. So what they're going to do with that, I'm not sure yet. I know I would be willing to bet several thousand dollars that Ezra Miller is not going to come back if I had to bet. But at the same time, the more I start to think about it, I don't know, never say never in Hollywood. So we'll see what happens with that. They are, like you said, they are going to bring Aflac back. And look, when it comes to Aflac, I hated the direction they brought that character in and how they made him a straight-up murderer. But he was also my favorite Batman. Not because he was a murderer, but because of how he looked. The suit was awesome. His fight scenes were epic. I mean, that was mm -hmm. the best Batman fight scenes we've ever gotten in a film. So there was a lot of cool things about that character. And if we do have a slightly rebooted version of him, I don't know, maybe just not make him a murderer. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Keaton's Batman was a murderer as well. So. He was. He was. Yeah. And, but I don't. That man I don't put a love, whole bomb in that dude's pants. <laughs> I don't love Keaton's Batman like everyone else does. I know that he's probably yeah, going to be right. popping up 
in, in the Flash mm-hmm. film and some of the other stuff. But in moving forward, I, I liked Affleck's Batman. I thought that physically he was imposing. You know, he was a big dude. Like, he had gotten really bulky for the role, which I appreciate. So, and seeing him and Cavill together on screen, you know, they're both just mountains of men, you know, like it, it was epic. It felt cool. So That's when it I'm comes at. to the Flashpoint movie, um, I hope that they kind of steal from Crisis on Infinite Earths. I'm tired of Barry Allen's character as a whole, just because we're getting a, a decade of him in TV. I've watched every season of that show painfully, just struggling my way through. They have told every single Barry Allen story that can be told. I'm just not interested in his character anymore. I love the flash, but I think that it's perfectly okay. If they just have him heroically sacrifice himself, then give us some Wally. Just get like, have, have Barry Allen be the iron man of the, of, of the DCU, you know, like have him be the, the sacrificial hero who gave everything. And Wally West basically just has to live up to that mantle now. But other than that, I think that one of the main reasons why the MCU has been so successful is because they had, the Ultimates comics to pull from. And I know that the Ultimates, uh, like the the Ultimate, the 1610 universe for uh, Marvel, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, basically Marvel decided to create an alternate universe and modernize all of their stories. So it's basically like, what if all of this stuff happened in the year 2000? And that's where a lot of like famous Spider-Man stories come from, like Ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales yep. comes from the 1610. The new, but, um, the new Nick Fury yeah, the new Nick Fury. So they a lot of the aesthetics of the MCU were pulled straight from the Ultimate Comics. I think that DC struggles to adapt a lot of their stories because they're pulling some from the 70s, some from the 60s, some from the 90s. I think that with you know DC Comics under new management, they should start an Ultimate alternate universe, like where the it continues 52. the stories. But like the the issue with the new fifty two that everyone hated was the fact that that replaced the main universe. Like that's why everyone hated it because like they were like, oh, no more pre flashpoint. The Batman that we love is now replaced by this. I think that people would have been a lot more accepting of it if the new fifty two existed over here and the main comic books continued, much like the six one six and the sixteen ten did. And I think that yeah. DC should do that. You know, that would inter like the new fifty two had its problems, but it introduced a lot of new people, myself included, into comic books. I think that that would be super beneficial. They could pull stories from there, they could pull aesthetics from there, and they could actually make the comic books more relevant. I think that a huge problem with these comic book movies is that the sales aren't reflected in the comics themselves because they essentially take the stories and then just forget about the comics. Take some notes from what Japan does with uh, manga and anime. Like the the sales of the anime essentially translate directly to the manga. The sales of the manga translate to the anime because the stories are so linked together. With DCU under new acquisition, I I just hope that people don't forget to support the comic book side of things as well. Um, and we don't really see that when when people support the movies. So do you, do you guys think with James Gunn taking over? And again, obviously we have no idea what what the Flash movie holds for us. But do you think if it is like a more of a Flashpoint? Or whatever, or if it's not, do you think we should still take the stories from before James Gunn take o- took over, or do you think it should almost be like a hard or soft reboot and give us new stuff and kind of like eliminating? Because if we eliminate the past, right? Like I'm not a big Birds of Prey fan. I kind of hate that movie. That then gets rid of the atrocity that they did to cassandra kane and then we can actually get a good cassandra kane who's actually an assassin and dope you know fighter um and then we can you know change a lot of like like i like cyborg but i don't want him in the justice league i want him in the teen titans they can do changes if the flashpoint reboots kind of everything i think that they should do more of a soft reboot because mm-hmm. you could like you said you could do a, everything you wanted to at that point you know you could keep Ben Affleck, keep Henry Cavill, but at the same time, maybe recast for a cyborg, introduce him in a different way, have him in the Team Titans like you're talking about. So, yeah, I mean, I think that that's the best option. A lot of people love Gal Gadot as well as Wonder Mm -hmm. Woman. I think that I love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. I think that she is literally perfect and born and bred for that role. There's a lot of things that you want to keep from the previous DCEU, and some things that we can change. Yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah, so that's honestly one of my favorite things about DC reboots is the fact that their entire purpose is to streamline things, eliminate what people don't like, and keep what people like. I think that something that we're definitely keeping uh, in this new DCU, the new Suicide Squad movie, they'll probably make that one the, the canon Suicide Squad, get rid of the first one. The Aquaman movies are going to stay canon. 
Wonder Woman is most likely going to stay canon, at least the first one. This would be a great opportunity for them to get rid of uh, Wonder Woman 84, but, but I doubt that that would happen. Well, I don't know. I think that if if that, the movie had some were, good things working for it, but then yeah, it kind of yeah, failed in other it, parts. Yeah, so I think that they're just going to not as bad as people movie. remember it because I went yeah. back and watched it, but it's still mm -hmm. pretty bad. You know, it's mostly yeah, bad. Yeah. I think that they're going to keep a lot of the good things, but I, I just have this feeling that they said that it's a 10 year plan that it's conclusive. Like, I think the way that the MCU is running right now, we're just assuming that it's going to go on forever as long as possible. I feel like there's going to be an end. Like, they're planning for whatever they have now. They're planning for the end of the DCU because, like you said, Gal Gadot, Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, they're great and I love them, but – and and they've wasted the last decade of, of potential, right? Mm -hmm. They're getting old. And that's just yes. the reality that we have. They, they, the max that they could do is 10 more years, especially Ben Affleck. Max. You know, like that is, that is the max. most that they will do. And so I think that I think that at the end of this 10 years or James Gunn's first 10 years, it's going to end. And then we're going to get a new DCU. We're going to get a reboot at that point, um, if not sooner. I think that we're going to have a, a good couple movies, some, some good event movies, maybe even a final Justice League. I think we should just appreciate the next 10 years for what they are. Mm -hmm. yeah i think that'll make the story better like an ending always makes the story better all right yes people we'll forget that we're getting an aquaman movie no one talks about it <laughs> yeah and the new yeah. shazam yeah. film is coming out they're both oh, coming shazam out as well they're, i think they're keeping shazam yep yep yeah, yeah that movie just i don't know to me just looks like it's gonna be meh mm -hmm. yeah yeah we'll yeah. see over under guys what do you think if over under 60 percent do you think that the dcu now moving forward with james gunn and peter safran is going to go down a path of financial success and critical acclaim. If he stays with what he's doing with the Suicide Squad, like that kind of like tone and brings what he's brought from like Guardians and everything, I would say it's going to be a success, but I can't really say much until we see the first project he made. Yeah, and we won't get that until after Shazam and after Aquaman because – those are still Walter Hamada's babies, you know, like the, he was fully in that position when those films were being crafted and even filmed. Aquaman and Shazam is being released before Flash. Yes, unfortunately. I wish that they would go ahead and put Flash out there, but I just want to know like what what is it? Like what what are we getting? Like that's the yep. biggest question to like everything in the DCU. What do you think, Isak? Over under 60% chance that things are gonna um, go great for DC and Warner. I think that things are gonna go fine. You know, I think that all things, when you compare it to the last 10 years that we've had, I think they're going to be great. Yeah, no no question. But when it comes to the actual quality, like once we get out of this like honeymoon phase of, oh, it's better than before. And we actually start to analyze these movies and TV shows for what they are, given what they have, I think that they're going to be good. If it's anything like Peacemaker, if it's anything like the Suicide Squad, I think it's going to be good. I'm, I'm going to stay hopeful. I'm going to stay hopeful that do it's going to be good. Do you guys yeah. think DC should keep on making these Elseworld stories? Like, don't get me wrong. I love the Batman I love mm -hmm. Matt Reeves interpretation. It's, it's great. But then we also have like the Joker second movie that's coming out. So do you think they should stick with like also doing these random Elseworld stories? Or do you think they should just like kind of like ignore that and stick only with DCU? So it stops people getting confused. I think they I think should. And here's, here's why, because it separates them further from Marvel. And mm -hmm. also this is something I've wished and hoped for that Marvel would do for the longest, but I don't see it happening especially now that you've introduced the multiverse, mm -hmm. why not? Why not drop $150 million on a standalone, like its own Avengers movie? And think mm -hmm. about this. You can cast you know, complete unknowns in all the roles, the new, a new Thor, a new Iron Man, new entire cast. And it would just be so fun to just see an adventure like they do with the animated films. You know, It would be so cool to see that because we as an audience, especially us hardcore you know, movie fans, we know who the Avengers are, you know, and I think it's safe to say now most casual audiences know who a lot of these characters are too. So you can even get a little crazy and throw in a wasp and an ant man and that original, you know, original Avengers lineup. Just do something completely off the wall and different. And I think that it would be so fun to see. But like I said, Marvel's not going to do that, but DC mm. needs to keep doing that because I mean, I want more of Matt Reeves Batman. So yes, it's mm -hmm. great. And, you know, getting that, you know, the Joker is kind of uh, take it or leave it. Some people love it. I think that it's tough to watch, but not because it's not a good film. It's a great film. You know, Joaquin Phoenix does an excellent job. 
But it's fun to get those stories, in my opinion. We'll see what they do. I think that it's a high possibility that, that they're going to do that because the first Joker film made a billion dollars. And yeah. that's, that's true. you know, considering the budget and the money they spent to make that film, huh. Yeah. What, so, what characters do you guys want to see in the DCU, like moving forward, that haven't been shown? We're getting Blue Beetle, right? We're, we're getting him we? in the future. I think so. Yeah, we're we getting that so. Blue Beetle film. So. I mean, his suit looks great. I, I just really mm -hmm. hope that doesn't get canceled. So I, I don't think that that movie will get canceled just because of how separated it is from everything. Like, I don't, it, like let's say Superman is played by a completely new actor and like the universe is completely different. I don't think that that will have any impact on Blue Beetle. Just because, like I said, it's it's taken place like all the way over here. And, and to my knowledge, there's no other characters that will be in the movie. So it's like you can literally have that movie and then just integrate it into the DC universe later on. Kind of like how they did with The Incredible Hulk. How like mm -hmm. that without that end credit scene, it could have just existed on its own all the way over here. I think that movie will be fine. I think that Batgirl was canceled just because of like how connected that is with just about everything else. I want some booster gold. That's what I want. Give me mm -hmm. some booster in Blue Beetle. So I, I wanted to see a Booster Gold, Blue Beetle time travel adventure with the Justice Society of America. Like that's my, that, that would be my ideal start to a new universe. But yeah, like you said, Blue, Blue Beetle, Booster Gold. And I think that they would do great on like a TV series as well, especially with James Gunn. Like he has that mm -hmm. comedic, like, you know, sense with them and it would be great. I want to see the Green Lantern Corps, which is already in production, especially with James Gunn at the helm. Or at the helm. I think that'll be great. I think it might've been canceled, but I don't know for sure. It was put on a, a hiatus, or not a hiatus, but a delay, see. and they recently re are reworking it and moving it away from Hal Jordan and focusing it on uh, John Stewart, and they're moving forward that with that good. TV project. I yeah. definitely think they should bring the the four main Green Lantern Earth players, bring them to the DCU. I so should get some Guy Gardner love in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I want them to keep his his douchey jacket. Yep. Thank you so much for joining me today. We I really appreciate you guys stopping by and having these discussions with me. Once again, MGC, where can we find you on social media? Official MGC on TikTok and MGC on uh, YouTube. How about you, Mr. Esoc? But uh, E underscore sock on just about everything, YouTube, TikTok, the real Esoc on Twitch. I haven't done anything with that yet, but I will. Also, you can check us out here on YouTube. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and on TikTok at Real Comic Book Cinema. Also, you can find us on Facebook. Until next time, have a good one.